This will be a supplement to the cell theory lesson. I want to show you some pictures of what cells look like under the microscope. You'll recall the cell theory states that all living things are composed of cells. Cells are the basic unit of life, and cells come from other cells. And that took a couple of centuries to really uh, be established by people mostly working with microscopes. You'll recall that Hooke early on uh, coined the word cell and identified these hollow chambers here in cork tissue. Uh, and Dutrachet argued that the fluid in, in living plant tissue was where important chemistry was happening. Well, what does living plant tissue look like? This is the leaf of an aquatic plant, and you'll notice the brick-like chambers here. These are the cells. So a plant is multicellular. The cells are attached to each other. Each of these cells, as Dutrache would have argued, will uh, get a source of nutrients, do complex chemistry, and then have to get rid of waste. And remember, cells live a double life. While each uh, cell is uh, alive because it's getting the nutrients it needs, the cells are specialized and they have to help each other so that each cell can remain alive. Now here we see some pictures of leaves and you'll of course notice that the leaves are green. Uh, by the way, these pictures were simply taken in the forest after a rain and we see some nice water droplets beating up on the leaves. Uh, but why are leaves green? Well, at the cellular level, it's because of these green discs inside of each leaf cell. So here we have one cell, the boundary of one cell, and here are these green discs, and they're called chloroplasts, and they're very important structures found in leaf cells. Um, it, it is the site of photosynthesis, and photosynthesis, as we will learn, is a very complicated chemical process that uses water and carbon dioxide molecules to make sugar molecules. So the plants are making their own food using sunlight as an energy source. They're making their own food in these green structures. Here we see uh, cells from a different species and while the cells here aren't as rectangular, uh, not all plant cells are rectangular, we can definitely see the green discs, the chloroplasts inside the cell. Here we see some more pictures, a more magnified picture of these chloroplasts. You can think of them as little sugar factories. And now let's look at some more biology of the cell. Now here we're going to do something uh, to, the, to the leaf on the microscope. We're going to add a drop of salt water. Now this is a freshwater aquatic plant. And when you add salt water to the slide, uh, water in the cytoplasm begins to move out of the cell and as a result the cell membrane pulls away from the cell wall. So plant cells have an outer rigid cell wall that does not lose its shape but then within the cell wall is a more flexible boundary called the cell membrane. And you'll recall when uh, Hook was looking at dead cork all of this material would have been eliminated in the cork tissue. So uh, Hook was just observing the outer cell wall of the plant cells. Here we see again the cell membrane is pulling away. Now notice that all the green discs of course are within the cell membrane too so as the cell membrane pulls away all the green discs, all the chloroplasts will be bunched up. And here we have the whole con all the contents of the cell are now bunched up into a small volume here. So we have the cell wall and then the cell membrane and all the contents of the cell are within the cell membrane. In this picture we can see one of those important cell constituents is the nucleus. Here the nucleus appears to have broken out of the membrane. And you'll recall uh, from our lesson it was uh, Robert Brown that uh, identified that cells have a nucleus. So there's the plant cell nucleus. Here's another nucleus that has ripped through the membrane as the cell was shrinking or the membrane uh, was uh, sort of pulling away as water exited the plant cell. And yet another picture. And another one. So here are some of the basic parts of a plant cell. We have the outer cell wall which is rigid and that helps the plant support its weight on land for example. Uh, we have the cell membrane, which is an inner boundary. Normally it's right inside the cell wall, but we've used the salt water trick 
to visualize the cell membrane. We have a nucleus, we have the green chloroplasts, and we have, of course, all the fluid that normally exists in a plant cell. Now, let's take a look at what animal cells look like. These are human cheek cells. So some student uh, took a toothpick and on the inside of their cheek they scraped a little bit and then put it on a microscope slide and then added a blue stain. You'll remember uh, animal tissue has to be stained often so we can visualize the cells. Otherwise they would be sort of transparent. So what we're seeing here are uh, cheek cells. Some of them remain attached, some have detached from their neighbors. So uh, the cheek cell here, this would be the cell membrane. And then we've got the fluid cytoplasm would be in this region here. And then we have the nucleus. The nucleus gets stained nice and blue in these pictures. So here we have three cheek cells stuck together, actually four here. Uh, so your cheek is composed of cheek cells that are stuck together, forming cheek tissue. You'll recall Bichot argued that organs are made of tissues. Well, now we see that tissues are composed of cells that look alike and perform the same function. Here we see two higher magnification shots of individual cheek cells. So, uh, microscopically, we see that both plants and animals are multicellular. Uh, there are lots of similarities in these cells. Uh, the animal cell has a cell membrane. The plant cell has a cell membrane. Animal cells have cytoplasm, the fluid inside. Uh, the plant cells have cytoplasm, the fluid inside the cell. Uh, animal cells have a nucleus. Plant cells have a nucleus. Interesting differences, though. Uh, whereas the animal cell only has a flexible outer boundary called the cell membrane, the plant cell has a membrane and a more rigid cell wall. So that's one difference. And a second difference, of course, is the presence of the green discs, the chloroplasts, in plant cells. Animal cells do not have chloroplasts. And the significance of that is that animals cannot make their own food by absorbing sunlight and some simple molecules in their environment. Animals must eat things. Plants can make their own food due to the chemistry happening in these chloroplasts.